Hello everyone. Construction. What comes to our mind when we talk about construction? Developments, it's an essential need and it's everywhere. On the other hand, high cost, impacts to environments and high energy consumptions. Building material selection is playing a major role in each of these concerns and it's a critical task with so many alternatives. I'm Sharon Vanmadi and I'll be presenting my research on ranking of walling materials and it is a survey-based approach. The walling element takes a high ratio in building envelope and especially in tropical climatic conditions. Enveloping materials play a considerable role in thermal comfort and energy consumption, so it becomes much important to come up with a suitable walling material. The contents to be covered in the presentation are starting from background, research, methodology, and ending with the conclusion and recommendation and the contributions of the research. The high cost and the impact towards the environment due to building in construction are happening in every stages of building life, ranging from initial stage to end of life stage. The life cycle thinking includes the stages from cradle to grain. The initial stage includes uh, extraction, transport to construction and construction, while the operational stage includes thermal comfort, energy performance, repairs, replacement, and then deconstruction, uh, transport to disposal and disposal, then reuse, recycle, and salvage values are associated with the end of life stage. Rather than comparing the cost and the impacts of the materials based on the initial state, analyzing throughout its lifetime becomes more appropriate. The recent energy crisis and the environmental impacts of the building industry have led to the active promotions of sustainable development in recent times. The eco-efficiency is a tool for sustainable development. It is a concept that combines the environmental and the economic impacts of the products or systems throughout their entire life cycle. So eco-efficiency leads to cost-effective and environmental friendly solutions. The walling materials chosen are burnt clay bricks, cement sand blocks, and compressed stabilized earth blocks that are popularly known as CSEB. The conventional materials mentioned in the study are usually plastered with cement and lime on both sides, while CSEB material could be finished without the application of plaster due to the wire cut finish of the blocks. So, CSEB has been compared with and without the application of plaster. Several studies have been conducted to compare the walling materials and the use of life cycle approach. Anyway, this study has been focused on comparison using eco-efficiency, which combines the cost and the impacts to the environment throughout the lifetime of the building. Let us have a look about the brief description on CSEB material. The earth construction is one of the oldest technologies that is widespread all over the world. It consists of several advantages. It's warm in winter and cool in summer. It improves the living comfort and thus reduces the energy uses, reusage, and the um, source is abundant. The laterite soils are commonly available in tropical climates, which are suitable for manufacturing other blocks. Choosing an abundant source leads to reduction in cost for acquisition, production, and transportation. However, it has been ignored for a long time due to lack of strength and durability. The problems are low load bearing capacity, vulnerable to weathering and rainfall, and it needs regular repairs. In order to overcome the above problems, stabilization was carried out. Stabilizing with cement increases the strength and the durability. Also, it improves the water resistance as well. Coming to the objectives of the research. The main objective of the study is to develop a planning approach in order to select the walling materials considering life cycle thinking with the aid of eco-efficiency practices. In order to achieve the main objective, the following subspecific objectives were identified, determining the cost components at different stages of a building, such as initial cost, operational cost, maintenance cost, replacement, and devising a mechanism to quantify the operational energy, and then to determine the carbon emissions due to embodied as well as the operational stages. In order to achieve the above objectives, the following methodology is adapted. The methodology has been developed in five phases. The data collection and database preparation was conducted in phase one. In phase two, the local materials uh, that are used for walling constructions have been identified. In the phase three, the life cycle cost and the impacts have been assessed. Under life cycle cost, initial operational maintenance and end of life stages have been conducted. Under the life cycle assessment of uh, the emissions due to embodied and operational emissions were considered while neglecting the end of life emissions with the literature evidence. 
Moving on to the phase four, the eco-efficiency framework has been developed by normalizing to the base case scenario and a case study approach was selected as the technique to analyze the cost elements and the energy emissions and to compare the selected walling materials over long run. And under the phase five, I've made my conclusions based on the case study results. This is the case study model house that was used to compare different walling materials by considering the life cycle cost and impacts. The design builder model has been shown in the figure. The life cycle cost and the life cycle impacts are separately computed and the eco efficiency was calculated in order to compare the walling materials with respect to economical and environmental concerns. The initial cost includes the material, labor, equipment, contract profit, and the other construction cost, and is significantly contributing the life cycle cost. It is the cost we put to build, in the, build the house. So the values have been calculated for houses with different walling materials, and it's evident that the brick wall is costing more at the initial stage, while CSEB is costing the lowest. The operational cost is the cost that we spend for the energy used that we uh, use it day to day for utilities and the material selection has a significant impact on the performance of the house and the operational energy consumption. The house with cement sand block walling material consumes more energy while CSEB is consuming the lowest. Discussions have been made with a group of engineers in the industry in order to quantify the maintenance cost. And then during the end of life stage, it was assumed that no salvage value is obtained from the building and the demolition has been carried out for free of charge. The cash flow has been prepared for 50 years and net present value has been found for the houses with different walling materials. And this is an interpretation of the net present value of the house with different walling materials. It could be noted that though the bricks cost uh, more at the initial stage, the overall cost is not that high uh, than the other materials. So the life cycle cost gives a better understanding than just considering the initial stages. Then moving on to the life cycle assessment, it has been carried out as embodied emissions as well as the operational emissions, total emissions. The bricks are consuming much embodied energy and emissions due to it. Uh, which could be due to the high energy consumptions during the burning of the bricks. Then the operational emissions have been calculated by multiplying the energy by the grid emission factor. So the operational emissions show a similar variation as the operational energy. This is an interpretation of total emissions that includes the embodied as well as the operational energy. Here, the computation of eco-efficiency has been shown. Net present value has been normalized to obtain the LCC, while the total emissions have been normalized to get the LCA, and LCC divided by LCA in order to obtain eco-efficiency ratios. The overall comparison of LCA, LCC, and eco-efficiency have been provided in the chart. So CSEB material has been identified as the best walling material and recommended to be used without the application of plaster. The findings of this research will encourage the building developers, contractors, and practitioners in selecting the most desirable material for their projects, considering the cost and environmental concerns. And a version of this research is published in peer-reviewed journal, Energy and Buildings. These are the references. And I would like to thank Professor Man Mrs. Chinta Jai Singh and Dr. Pierwan for the guidance and the continuous support throughout the research. My very special thanks to engineers in the industry who shared their valuable experience in order to complete the survey-based data collection. My sincere thanks to staff of the Department of Civil Engineering for the support and guidance provided towards this research. I extend my gratitude to all previous researchers whose contributions I have made use in carrying out this research project. Last but not least, I'm truly thankful to my parents who brought me up to this far and supported me in all ways possible. Thank you.